Well, the trial of a Time Lord continued with Mind Warp. Now, with a title like that, you would have thought it referred to, like, say the Doctor and Perry got... They, they land somewhere and they get caught and they're knocked out and then they wake up and have some adventure, you know, and there's weird things happening and then all of a sudden you discover... Oh, they're actually in some virtual reality world and didn't realize it. Or they're being mind controlled into thinking it, or they're, you know, something like that. Instead, no, uh, it should have been like a uh, brain swap or something like that. It should have been the title. As uh, ultimately, that's the, uh, the main point of what's going on here. So the trial continues. So now the doctor's on another admi- uh, adventure. It's much sooner. Than the previous one, as we understand that the doctor's been taken, uh, and we find out from what point in time here to stand trial, uh, accused by the Valyar. Gee, I wonder who he is. And um, so this is the next bit of uh, evidence that they uh, they view of the doctor uh, up to his shenanigans that causes all kinds of trouble and proves that he's a danger that needs to... uh, be stopped and um so uh, here he's you know yeah you can see the outfit is more closer to what he's wearing in the trial uh, mainly the i don't know the tie or whatever you call it and that sort of thing so uh he and perry land on this planet and for what it's worth for the time and what they had and i mean who's to say what an alien world looks like that's why i always give a pass to cheap sets and stuff like from star trek old star trek and stuff like that Uh, i've always been fine with that and i I don't have a problem here and it's got this kind of cool backdrop with the you know the planet or oh it's a twin planet that's right he mentions it's not a moon uh with its rings and everything and uh sure it's cheesy colors and stuff but they reference it it's this weird environment that it just looks that way and uh it's not bad it's not bad for what they had and uh so it kind of works uh it also uh with the uh oversaturated colors there it uh it deadens the colors of the doctor's coat so it doesn't look as bad (laughs) but it's all very brief and of course well they get captured and taken to some place (laughs) underground but it's not a dream or anything um and once again, you're back into the caves and what stuff like that. Probably, you know, no, not probably. It's the same set they used over and over again. But, you know, and um, if you know how to do it and you know how it's, and this isn't too terribly bad here and there. Uh, you can, you know, because previous uh, show, well, they didn't call them showrunners then, but, uh, you know, the, the crew behind the shows and previous Doctor Who knew how to handle this. Obviously, which I consider the best Doctor Who ever done was the Genesis of the Dalek. Uh, it's the same thing. It's the same set the whole time, you know, and yet it looks so expensive. And, you know, it's just the way you handle it and that sort of thing. Here, eh, they're not as good as that, obviously, but it's it's kind of fine. It's just uh, they have some fighting scenes and they just don't know how to do it. Um, it actually works better when they have uh, Brian Blessed uh, running in slow motion. Then it's not that bad. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Brian Blessed, oh boy, bless him. <laughs> he shows up here. Um, he's supposed to be this warlord guy that he's been captured to be experimented upon. Uh, and yet he's wearing like a samurai type headset or whatever but he's an alien so it doesn't really matter and who knows whatever they just threw stuff a bunch of stuff together uh it's like the other guys look to be wearing some sort of native american dress and stuff like that uh but you know they're all aliens and they've all been captured to be experimented upon uh by this uh, dr crozier or crozier or whatever uh, the young Dr. Crozet. Um, not really that young. And then the hairline's vastly receding and everything. But um, the main thing is Seal returns. And Seal, this is one of their more creative endeavors for this era of Doctor Who, made for a pretty good uh, villain to be a recurring villain and uh, something they probably could have built on. But just, you know, Doctor Who ran out of time. <laughs> Get it? And, uh, you know, just a simple simplistic means of a, he well he's always sitting down when well, he kind of has to <laughs> and then you meet another of his species there as well as his mentor 
who uh, is is dying, and uh, the only way to save him is for this Dr. Crozier or Crozet or whatever, um, uh, is going to take his brain out and put it into another body. Uh, so there you go. That's that's the mind warp. I still don't think that's quite... Because they're not projecting his mind into anything or anything. They're literally taking his brain out. Um, because uh, he, he, he's a mutant of some sort, and his brain continues to grow, and uh, his skull can't contain it. So he's suffering from headaches, and he's about to die, so they gotta got to do this. And uh, that's the whole point. Um but meanwhile, it's like the thing about Sill, uh, what kind of villain yeah, he represents is that he's just extremely greedy uh, to the point, of course, he commits crimes or whatever and is very corrupt and corrupts other people in, in this uh, objective. And so that puts him in a different uh, uh, class of criminal here in that, you know, like the dialects or the master wants to take over the universe or whatever. Sometimes it's in revenge plots or whatever, but it's always in that goal. Plus, you know, it wants immortality and all that. Uh, whereas the dialects just want to, well, they want to take over the universe too. <laughs> but they just want to wipe everybody else out in doing it, which I don't really see what the end game there is. But nevertheless, that's kind of the typical goal for quite a few of, of, of Doctor Who enemies and monsters and whatnot. Whereas Seal here, uh, he's out for the money. Uh, and he just doesn't care if it kills him. If it wipes out a whole population, so what? Uh, he just, you know, that's, that's his uh, his goal in life. And uh, But he's also a bit of an idiot in that he doesn't uh, recognize Perry as one of the hottest companions who ever graced the screens of Doctor Who. <laughs> uh, but sadly, this is the final episode for the lovely uh, Perry. Um, however... It almost is a good ending in that uh, not handled very well. I think, you know, could have used a little more time into this. But uh, that she seemingly dies. And really looking at it, I think they should have just left it like that. Because this could have put the Doctor in a very dark place. They talk about the Sabbath Doctor being the Dark Doctor and all that. And they were thinking about that. Also, this supposed setup with the Valyard, which I'm sure you already know. We'll get to it. And maybe they were thinking that. But, you know, at the end of this, she didn't die. They go into it. And uh, I always thought that that could have been revealed to have been a lie. You know, that she did die, you know, and the Time Lord's like, oh, boy, we oof, we screwed this up. Because <laughs> the Doctor in this, this is the moment he gets beamed out by the Time Lords and brought to the trial. So if the Doctor could have saved her or not, well, he never got the chance. You know, and unfortunately, uh, he's letting Perry and uh, Brian Blessed... <laughs> Uh, believe that he's turned evil and has is, is switched sides and has is, is joined Sill and all of that, but it's a it's a ploy that he was doing and uh, ultimately he flipped the switch and was helping Brian Blessed and they, they, they go charging in, but the Doctor gets abducted by the Time Lords and uh, Brian Blessed comes in to find bald <laughs> Perry. Uh, they shaved her head so they could put the brain in her, you know. And um, and he's like, oh, no. So he just starts blasting away at everybody. Um, and so there you go. And then that's how it ends. And the doctor, you killed Perry. And the time was like, yeah, well, you know, shit happens. And uh, the valier is like, no, doctor, you did. Had you not to defend, this wouldn't have happened. You know, the whole thing. Um, which goes to show that uh, when you get to the ultimate outcome of the Valyard, uh, does he blame his, well, the doctor <laughs> uh, for Perry's death? You know, that sort of thing. And that's what starts this whole thing. And he just becomes convinced that the whole life of the doctor was a mistake. You know, yeah, well. I, you know, I mean, I know, yeah, in, in, by canon, she said, you know, they did this little special thing recently where there's Perry, you know, the widow of Brian Blessed's character. <laughs> yeah, they tacked that on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think even Louise Jameson said she had, would have rather Tila had died in the invasion of time. 
I'm not so keen on that. I kind of like the idea that she stayed behind. I mean, the idea that she falls in love with one of the other. They needed to develop that if that's what they wanted to do. They didn't. You know, that's the problem there. Um, but but here with Perry, I, I think they missed an opportunity for some pretty serious drama here uh, that takes a turn to a different direction from the from the, this doctor and uh especially since uh colin baker's doctor emphasizes the arrogance which is always there it has always been there there's friendlier doctors than him of course certainly his pre- immediate predecessor but the idea of emphasizing that he'd be the one to uh, go into a very dark place you know but um ah, i just they were kind of flailing at that point already uh, it's amazing how many episodes they got out of Sylvester McCoy. You know, by the time they got there, it was already over. So, and poor Colin Baker. Just, <laughs> they just never gave the guy a shot. You know, they dressed him up in that clown outfit. And uh, we're really just slapping these shows together. And uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, so this one, I in a lot of ways, could have been an okay show but it's just dragged down by a lot of stupidity and stuff uh it has its moments it's not bad and again i think uh the seal and his old species and all that could have gone on to be uh some, a recurring villain for the doctor to deal with um i know he showed up in big finished stories and stuff like that but um and it just it, 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 it again doctor who had already run out of time by then and uh, that's too bad. But uh, so uh, two more adventures <laughs> in Trial of a Time Lord. And uh, we'll continue on with that.